Hello and welcome to Ashuda Hospitals. I am Pratyusha Chaudhary, hosting Nursing Education and Training Webinar Series live on Facebook every Thursday at 3 p.m., bringing for the most interesting topics for you. So thank you, thank you for joining us today. Uh, make sure you'll be staying, stay tuned till the end and uh, you can post your questions or queries in the Facebook chat section, which will be addressed during and at the end of the webinar. So again, we are back with a neonatal nursing webinar series. So our topic for today's discussion is about neonatal hypoglycemia, about its prevention and the management strategies. So without further delay, let me introduce you for the pros of today's webinar. So I take the privilege of welcoming our uh, expert panelists for the day, Dr. Sudha Ma'am, who is our Eng and Dynamic Senior Consultant Neonatologist, Ashoda Hospital, Somaji Guda. We welcome you, Ma'am. Thank you, Pratisha. And for uh, welcoming me in this webinar. Our, uh, our pleasure, Ma'am. I'm happy to welcome uh, one of our speakers for the day. Uh, she is also uh, a nurse manager for the pediatric ward, Ms. Uh, Zarin who have backed almost 12 years of expertise, uh, who's working with Ashoda Hospitals, so uh, Sekandarabad. Uh, looking forward for your enlightening session uh, and discussion with uh, Sudha Ma'am and also with Zarin. Over to you, Zarin. Good afternoon, Ma'am. Good afternoon, Sudha Ma'am and Patricia Ma'am. Yeah. Today's topic is hypothesis. Today's topic is hypoglycemia. So hypoglycemia is nothing but it is a first ever problem, a first ever health issue a baby faces when it is born. So as a baby is born itself, you can see the baby's first condition is hypoglycemia. So like today's topic, let us cover all these things like what is hypoglycemia, the physiology of hypoglycemia and risk factors of hypoglycemia and its management. So as I said in the starting, hypoglycemia is, is a condition of blood sugar level which is lower than the normal. In the first few days after birth, it is defined as, according to WHO, if the sugar level or the glucose level is below 45 mg per dl, it is called hypoglycemia. If the baby is born, if the glue sugar level is below 40 per mg per deciliter within 48, 24 hours, it is called hypoglycemia. After 24 hours of birth, if the blood sugar level is below 50 mg per deciliter, it is called hypoglycemia. As Did you all understand? So hypoglycemia is nothing but it is hypo. It is deficient of glucose level in a blood immediately after the baby is born. Okay, in the initial days, as I told you, let me repeat, it is immediately within few days, if it is below 45 mg per deciliter, or within 24 hours, if it is below 40 mg per deciliter, and after 24 hours of birth, if it is below 50 mg per deciliter. So here we have a question for you. What is the normal level of blood glucose level of baby for the first few hours of birth? Any answers? I have just discussed with you two times. Any answers? Okay, the answer is if the sugar level is above 45 mg per deciliter. Next, next we'll see what is the physiology of hypoglycemia. So in this screen, can you see two pics? A picture, two are there. One is normal and one is abnormal, right? In the normal part, can you see WBCs and RBCs? And the small crystal like around those are glucose. So in the normal picture, you can see that there are so many glucose crystals. But here you can see they are very less. So right, why this is happening? Because at the birth, glucose regulatory mechanisms are sluggish. So what is happening? The infant is susceptible to hypoglycemia when the glucose demand increases. So next, let us see what are the risk factors. As we all know, gestational diabetes is one of the reasons where the parent or the mother is having sugar diabetic. The child is having more prone to have diabetes, right? And the baby who is large for the gestational age, the baby requires more of energy. So more of feed. If less feed is given, the baby may go in hypoglycemia. And more, the third thing we can see, the baby who is small and who has, who is preterm. So what's happening in preterm? They, they have a limited glucose reserve. And also the neonate is unable to generate new glucose. 
Next, let us see what is the infusion rate. As we have infusion rate for all inotropes and everything, so even glucose infusion rate, GIR is there, okay? So what is done here? It is measured, okay? It is measured as mg per kg per minute, which has been received by the neonate. If you have a, you have a certain GIR, for term neonates, you have 4 to 6 mg per kg per minute, and for premature, you have 6 to 8 mg per kg. So with this GIR, what, what we are doing when a unit has hypoglycemia, the GIR should be calculated to make sure they are receiving adequate glucose level. Next is a very easy format. This is made, done to make it clear for you the, how you have to uh, see the flow. Like we have a flow chart for all BLS and PALS and all. So it makes us easy to understand. Here we have made an easy management. If you want, you can take a screenshot also. It will be on the screen for some time. So let me explain to you. If the blood glucose level is below 2.6 millimole per liter. That is nothing but below 46 mg per dl. You have to see if yes, if the baby is able to feed or no. So if the baby is unable to feed, you can start 10% of glucose that is common nowadays, which we are giving 10% glucose, which is given for 2 ml per kg body weight. If you are giving enteral, you see that in enteral also, if the glucose level is below 1.5 millimole per liter, that is 26 mg but below mg per dl, what you can do is you can give glucose or you can give buccal mucosa. You can give that glucose gel as buccal mucosa. Nowadays, we are getting gels which are kept on the palate or the side of the baby. So, you can give that or else you can go with your routine enteral feed or N NGT that is nasocapsule tube that is more than 60 ml per kg per body weight feed. Okay. After that, what you are going to do? As I already told you, first of all, we'll detect how much is the sugar level. If it is below 2.6, that is if it is below 45, you have to see the baby is able to feed or no. If the baby is not able to feed, you're going to give IV infusion. And nowadays, like if, if there is no IV access, we may also go for IM glucogen, which is not done nowadays. In again, enteral, what as I said to you, you can give enteral feed. If not, you can go for buccal mucosa gel. That is glucose gel available nowadays. Okay, then after that, you have to repeat your total blood glucose level for one hour. After one hour. After one hour, still if the baby's glucose level is 2.6, what you're going to do? You're going to again repeat the IV glucose. That is 10% glucose we are giving according with 2 ml per body kg weight. Then you can also see the body patient baby has any fluid restriction. You can increase the concentration of the glucose. If not, you want to go for oral. Same thing. You can increase the percentage of the fluid also by 20 ml per kg per day. Okay. Here, if you are if you are clear, if the baby is having normal uh, sugar level that is 2.6 millimole per liter, then you can reassess. Start reassessing the blood glucose level three to four. Uh, hours hourly and then three consecutive blood glucose tables should be measured in that you can if you are going to give enteral continue enteral if you are giving IV the baby's NVM you can go for this one only so next what you are going to do is you have to see as I told you after one hour also if it's not like that you can go for two points below 2.6 you can go for increase of fluid and increase of oral fluid if it is about 2.6 if you think then you can go for this only you can go for this consecutive three times measurements then wait for some time then repeat again the glucose level for 30 minutes mm -hmm. still if you find the baby's sugar level is 2.6 you can again repeat <clears throat> that uh, glucose level as a 10 same thing iv bolus 10 percent glucose 2 ml per body weight and again, uh, you can, if it is oral, if you can do the same thing. But still in the final, after all these efforts, if you see that the baby's glucose level is not increasing, it is still 2.6, you can have an expert, neonatal expert opinion. Or else if you think it is above 2.6, you can still go on with the IV fluid or you can give oral, that is third hourly. Okay, is it clear? This flowchart is very easily made to understand, but make it clear that you have to check first, first hour, half an hour, and then if the baby is okay, consecutively three to four hours, you have to see 
that uh, blood glucose level should be 2.6, then you can go with your routine discussion, routine thing. If not, you can go for an expert advice. Here I have a question. After one hour of initial management of hypoglycemia, the glucose level of the baby is below about 2.6 millimole. What is your immediate responsibility? Any answers? Yeah, here we have to continue your regular for three hours. As I told you, there should be three consecutively. You have to check three readings should show 2.6 mg per deciliter. Then you have to, this is the answer for this question. And then let us see what, how we are managing. So in the flow, same thing I'm going to tell you, which is in the flow chart. Immediately after that, you have to check GRBS for 30 minutes if you're giving IV. And if you're giving an oral glucose, you have to wait for one hour. As we all know, third IV fluid, it will act fastly and oral will take time. So in that case also, if it is more than 25 to 50, you can measure feed if patient baby is stable or IV fluid, you can give measured feed. Or if the sugar is again below 25, you can go for bolus, 10% dextrose, 21, 22 ml per kg then with the maintenance fluid. GRBS monitoring should be done every sixth hourly for all the low birth babies. Next, as a nurse, what is our responsibility? So as a nurse, our responsibility is to check. Check whether the baby has any hypoglycemia, any signs of hypoglycemia, or baby have any risk. As I told you, there are risk, a gestational mother, diabetic mother, babies are having risk. We can see the baby's weight is more. They are also in risk. We can see preterms and small age babies also are at risk. So what we have to do is see that if at all the babies are, if you're thinking they are at risk, you have to check sugar at first hour, second hour, fourth hour, sixth hour and twelfth hour of birth. So it again varies from hospital to hospital, but as a nurse, it is our responsibility to see the signs and symptoms or the baby is dull, not feeding, or the baby is at higher risk. So if you go, uh, again, the second thing is see that IV cannula should not have a glucose. Why sometimes we unable to take sample, sometimes we may take sample from the IV cannula itself. So if you take from the IV cannula, already glucose will be there. So our results may vary. So sometimes we may get a false results. So even the glucose is a powdery kind of a thing. When it's dry, you might have noticed in the IV cannula, in the IV sets, it's a powdery kind of thing. So easily IV cannula may get damaged or we have to recannulate the baby. So last question, let me ask you, what is the blood glucose level? Like blood glucose level is dash considered as hypoglycemia in the first 24 hours of birth. Any answers? Yeah, the answer is if the baby is uh, glucose is less than 40 mg per deciliter. Thank you. Thank you, Zareen. Uh, it was really ni nice presentation. Yeah, Chris, you have uh, provided a very brief introduction about uh, management of hypoglycemia. Um, so, the ma'am, welcome to the panel discussion now. We have few questions that we wanted to ask you. Uh, first thing is, how could we screen for a neonatal hypoglycemia? Screening already Zareen has uh, covered. Like babies who are at risk of developing hypoglycemia, like premature babies, low birth weight babies, large for gestational babies, babies born to mothers with a gestational diabetes. Not only those babies, any sick baby. Suppose if baby is on CPAP support, on ventilator support, so conception rate will be high. All these babies, we have to screen for hypoglycemia. So uh, for high-risk babies, first initially, we'll screen for one, two, three hours, as uh, Zerin has already told. And after that, once the sugars are stabilized and if there are no hypoglycemic episodes, then also we'll continue sixth hourly monitoring till uh, the baby is uh, stable. Okay. Uh, we have two things in the neonatal hypoglycemia. One is symptomatic and one is asymptomatic. How can we define the symptomatic and symptomatic? So, 
actually practically any level uh, less than 45 is hypoglycemia irrespective of days so zerin okay. has uh, elaborated about it and um, basically hypoglycemia is divided into two types symptomatic and asymptomatic what are the symptoms of uh, hypoglycemia what are the clinical features of hypoglycemia apart from checking blood sugar we have to see the baby also the baby is feeding well poor feeding is there if baby is active or not dullness lethargy and uh, sometimes hypoglycemia may lead to seizures uh, stoppage of uh, breathing that is apnea and also baby might directly go into coma before uh, the doctor or nurse pick up hypoglycemia so why are we worried about hypoglycemia so much so other than this clinical features the treatment is very simple but yes. why are we worried about hypoglycemia so much because hypoglycemia might even lead to neurological disability neurons <clears throat> hypoglycemia will lead to brain injury which will uh, lead to neurological disability lifelong neurological disability to both the child and to the family yes so to prevent uh, such major catastrophe uh, this simple treatment and the simple prevention methods have to be followed okay so coming to this uh, what would be the preventive measures uh, i haven't uh, answered your uh, question completely asymptomatic asymptomatic is uh, just we have checked the glucose level the glucose is less than uh, grbs is less than 45 but baby is completely all right active and all other then uh, we categorize asymptomatic sorry you were asking you asked the next question sorry Uh, Patish, I think there's some connectivity issue with your laptop. Zarin. Zarin, are you there? Push. One moment, man. Huh? Yeah, but this is your audible. Yeah. Sorry, ma'am. Actually, there's some technical glitch. Yes. Pratisha, please continue. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the question that we have uh, for the next is about the preventive strategies for the neonatal hypoglycemia. So as soon as the baby is born, babies who are at risk for developing uh, hypoglycemia or in fact any other baby, baby should be fed within one hour of life and baby should be fed regularly. So if it is a stable baby, we'll shift the babies to mother's side usually. So yes. at mother's usually, there'll be under anesthesia or uh, then they themselves are not very well so the attenders have to take care of the baby sometimes attenders think that because baby is sleeping we should not disturb the baby for feeds it should not be so so maximum gap between the feet should be three hours so baby should be fed every three hourly or at regular intervals to avoid uh, to prevent hypoglycemia and if baby is admitted in nacu we have to do our screening grbs yeah, the main thing that we can understand is the parents' family also uh, re requires uh, uh, counseling that when we can feed the baby and uh, how oh. they have to identify the symptoms also. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what would be the take-home message that you wanted to give for the, uh, how the nurses can take care of the hypoglycemia in the neonatal intensive care units or else end after the labor, just immediately after the labor? So nurses play a very important role in preventing hypoglycemia two settings i'll tell one is in nacu one is at mother's side at mother's side once the baby is shifted the nurse have whenever the nurse takes rounds she has to concentrate on baby also she has to ask when the baby was last fed if the interval is crossing three hours so they have to tell the parents that maybe we'll go into hypoglycemia please feed the baby so most of the times breastfeeding itself is enough to prevent hypoglycemia but there are certain circumstances like mother is not well uh, uh, she is still recovering in those cases we advise formula. Some feeding baby has to get. <clears throat> Some units strictly say that uh, formula feeding is not advised. Definitely breastfeeding is the best feeding, but uh, not at the expense 
of uh, hypoglycemia to babies. <clears throat> One is that, and uh, IDM babies, uh, screening should be done regularly. And in NACU, if the, suppose if the baby is on IV fluid infusion, mm -hmm. the canola has got swelling. The uh, IV fluid if, uh, infusion has stopped suddenly, then baby might go into hypoglycemia because mm -hmm. baby was getting uh, high glucose till then. So suppose cannula was out and uh, there was a large swelling for so many hours, then the risk, there is a risk of baby going into hypoglycemia. So babies who are an, at risk of hypoglycemia or who already developed hypoglycemia, at least two cannula should be there. So as soon as a nurse notices that there is a cannula swelling, she has to immediately connect the fluid to another cannula. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, so thank you, ma'am, for the enlightening discussion we have got of about the neonatal hypoglycemia, about the immediate management that the nurses can do. So here is for you, the audience, like uh, we are again um, back with the neonatal nursing series. So make sure that you will be available for this and stay tuned to our issue, the hospital's uh, Facebook page for more and more updates. The next coming up topic on the neonatal series is about the preterm care. Make sure you will definitely attend this and grab the knowledge about how you can take care of a preterm baby in the neonatal care units. Thank you. That's for today. Stay tuned to Asia the Hospitals.